All right, guys, welcome back to another Cichlid Escape video where we are back in the fish room, currently doing a water change on the 125 gallon. We're going to do about 25% today, and we're also going to clean one of the canister filters that we've got underneath the tank, which is a Sunsun 304B. So let's get it going. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you service in any canister filter is to stop the flow through the pipes. Then after that you can turn the power off. From there you can disconnect the hoses and then you're looking to get into the canister filter. And with the Sun Sun it's really really simple. You just basically disconnect the four clips that are keeping the upper part of the unit attached to the lower part. Disconnecting them is really, really simple. And then I just discard the upper part of the filter onto the floor so I can work in the main section of the canister. Depending on how long you've gone without cleaning the filter, usually at this point you can see how much damage the fish have caused. But for me in this situation, I think I last cleaned this filter maybe about two months ago, something like that. So the damage in mine isn't too bad, although I obviously will want to rinse out a lot of the media and clean a lot of the finer mechanical media that I do implement in here. But before we do that, we're gonna wanna get a spare bucket and fill it about halfway up with tank water so you can rinse out the media that you want to keep during the cleaning process without killing any biological bacteria. Once the bucket's filled, we're gonna take a look inside the canister. Top protective tray comes off first, just gets lightly rinsed out into the bucket. And then we're gonna look at the biomedia. Obviously, the Sunsun 304B is unlike the Fluval FX6 and the water actually goes down the canister and then comes up through all the media. So you'll actually have it opposite my Fluval FX6 and have the biomedia at the top because that's the last thing it hits before going back into the tank. As you can see in here, I've got some basic bio balls and then I've got some Seekem Matrix. All I'm gonna do is take the basket out and gently rinse it in the tank water just to try and get any of the uneaten food, detritus or fish poop that has got through the mechanical media off the biological media before putting it back into the canister. So once that's cleaned, we're then gonna move on to the third tray. The third tray in here is again, some biological material. Not got a boatload in here, but I basically use my Fluval FX6 that I've got running on the other end of the 125 for a lot of the mechanical and use the Sun Sun for a lot of the biological. So anything spare that I've got, I just basically put in here. It's not massively filled up so I'll just rinse the bags and the bio out before then stacking it on the other tray. Then we're moving on to the second one and this is basically just packed with polyfill. As you can see by the colour of it I've not left this filter too long before cleaning it as if I would have, the polyfill would be absolutely yucky by now. So I'll just rinse this out. At this point, I was debating keeping it, but on second thoughts, the polyfill is about $7 from Walmart for the big bag. So I ended up just scrapping it, putting it to the side and I'll refill it with a new one. Reason I did this was because the vast majority of the waste that's gathered in the filter will have been gathered in that polyfill so even if I were to clean that out and put it back in the tank the vast majority of it will be filled with nitrates and 
basically anything that you don't want to put back in the tank. So definitely worth just grabbing a new uh, sheet of the polyfill and going again. The last tray of the Sun Sun is then filled with a coarse foam pad. And this is the pad that initially came with the filter. I always reuse this, so I'll just rinse out the tray and then I'll squeeze out the sponge as well as I can. And that coarse sponge is basically the first thing that the water coming into the filter hits. So a lot of the bigger particulates from the water will be contained in that sponge. So I always make sure I give that a good rinse and really just kind of knead it into the bucket and try and get as much of the stuff that's contained in that sponge out before then putting it back in the tray and reloading the canister. Before I throw all the media and the trays back in, however, I always like to check the main basket of the canister for any leftover detritus, or in my case, sand. Just because I implement sand in the 125 and some of the fish in there are fairly large, sometimes some sand gets in there. So I'm gonna quickly rinse that out and also obviously get rid of all the dirty water that we've just squeezed out of the mechanical and bio media. And then we'll be good to go. After that, on this cleaning, I decided to clean the Sun Sun 304 Bees and Pella. I don't always do this every single filter cleaning, but it had been a while, as you can see. So I thought I'd do it. And the aim in this process is just to basically get that gunk off the main impeller. Quick process, and it just basically means there's less of a rattle and less of a chance that something can go wrong within the canister itself. Once that's complete, it's now time to reload the baskets of the canister. With this Sun Sun 304B, the water comes down that little socket where the UV is and then back up through the media. So that's why I put the coarse mechanical media at the bottom of the filter because that's the first thing the water's gonna hit. After that, we then look in to the polyfill and I actually got this bag a while back from Walmart, I believe, and this bag's lasted me a boatload of time. I'm probably looking at two or three years now. And basically the aim when you do this is just to fluff out as much polyfill as you can and get it covering all corners of the basket. As long as you do that, you'll be golden and then the water won't be able to bypass any part of this media. And basically anything that's got through the coarse media will then hit this. And best believe it's not getting through that because that is some pretty thick, fine stuff. So that's what goes second in my Sun Sun 304B. And then after that, we've got a lot of the biological media that I use for this tank. Need some more, quite clearly. I've got some uh, fluval stuff in there and then some bio balls. And then the last tray to go in is packed full of bio media. I've got some bio rings in there and some Seeker Matrix and I'm hoping to get some more of that because I definitely want to have a lot more biological media as part of this 125. I'm sure it's fine but I just like having a little bit more just for peace of mind. After that top tray protector goes on and that's pretty much it guys. After that you're just making sure the trays on the inside are all interlocked. Sometimes if they're not you'll get a little bit of a rattle so I always be sure to make sure that they are really nice and secure down in there. After that, we're filling the canister back up with some more tank water, which just makes it easier to prime, meaning the canister can pretty much just get going as soon as you plug it in. So that's about the level I fill my Sun Sun 304B up. You leave a little bit of room at the top because obviously you've got to get the UV steriliser in and get the lid on without it overflowing. That's pretty much the level. After that, we are throwing the lid back on. All you want to do when you throw the lid back on is just to make sure that the seams are nice and secure. As you can see, I push the entire lid down before interlocking the connectors. And every now and again, I also throw some Vaseline over the O-ring, although this time I didn't bother with that. The Vaseline just makes sure there's a little bit more of a seal 
with the canister is because sometimes that gets a little bit dry and it can seep a little bit of water. That's also the reason why I've got the canister filler in the box, just on the off chance that it does leak. I've got a little bit of time to figure that out. From there, I just like to run a towel around the canister and just take any of the watermarks off there as I then inspect the canister the first five, 10 minutes of operation just to make sure, again, it's not leaking. That is my biggest fear with these canister filters, although you can't argue with the gallons per hour rating that you get, unless you use a sump, of course, but then, you know, that could overflow as well. From there, we've got the locks in there. We are then moving it back into the box that I use which after filling the canister can be a little bit awkward, but we get it in there just fine. From there, I'll give it another once over with the towel and then I will begin to connect the hosing. The hosing on all canister filters is very, very simple to connect. Again, I just make sure that it's nice and secure before locking it. But on the Sunsun 304B, all you need to do is throw that down, move that lever over and water will begin to flow from the tank. And then once you prime it a little bit, turn it on, you are golden. So this whole process in total took me about 15 to 20 minutes. And as you could probably hear throughout the video, I were also doing a water change with my siphon the entire time. And that just basically helps to double up. You're not only cleaning your canister, but you're doing a water change at the same time, which in turn is gonna help these guys. So that's pretty much the maintenance that I do every month or two on the canisters. I'll clean them one at a time. The FX6 one month, the Sunsun 304B the other month, all while doing weekly water changes when I'm not doing the filler cleanings. And now obviously it's time to refill the tank. For this, I use obviously water and Seachem Safe. I use Seachem Safe because it could basically treat an ocean. If you've not heard of it, I would strongly recommend it. And basically it's just a powdered form of Seekem Prime, but way, 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 way more concentrated, which saves you money and who don't love doing that. But after the Seekem safe spiel and way too many ways, let's fill up the tank. During the whole process of a water change, I'll also feed a lot of my fish. And that just basically means that they're gonna enjoy water changes a little bit. Obviously it's an incredibly stressful time for them. So I just throw a little bit of flake into the water away from the siphon, just to give them a little treat and hopefully not stress them out too much. I definitely notice that I've been doing this for a long time with my Blue Neon group as every single water change, they are right up at the glass, almost expecting food. I'll have to show you that one time, it's pretty awesome. So while that tank finishes filling, another new and pretty exciting thing that we've got in the fish room are these new Ziz Easy breeder boxes. The breeder boxes are incredibly well built and I've been utilizing these now for a few weeks. I will end up doing a review on this product, but so far I really, really like it. And I've actually got some blue neons in this little breeder box now. As you can see, it's got a little air stone that creates a lot of flow into the breeder box. And overall, I'm finding it really, really good. And these fry are loving it as well. Got about 16 or 17 blue neons in there. Looking really, really good. Feeding them some cobalt fry food right now. And this guy is also just looking mighty fine. Look at him. Unbelievable. If you haven't already, check out the fish room tank tour video that I did on him. Definitely won't regret it. And I'll link it above right now. Tank's nearly filled. So let's get back to it. All 
Right, so the tank's all filled up, filter's in place. The only thing that's left to do is turn the canister filter on. One thing that I do want to show you in this video, and this is because I haven't cleaned my canister filter's pipes in a long, long time, is the amount of debris that comes through the pipes when I relaunch the canister filter. Obviously gonna have to clean the pipes at some point soon. Just want you to watch this. No real big issue as far as I can see, but it definitely does need cleaning. Ugh. Oh, it gets worse. It's gonna get worse. Where is it? Come on. Oh, oh, there it is. So yes, as you can see, definitely need to clean those pipes and I would strongly recommend you doing so if you do have a canister filler and you've not done it in a while. That's my next job the next time I clean this Sunsun 304B. So all we're gonna do is let this tank settle, let the water clear and we'll come back and I'll show you how it's looking in a few hours. Later that evening, here's the tank looking mighty fine. And of course the nitrates in the tank will have gone down because of the water change and the canister cleaning that I did. And that's basically your main aim whenever you do a water change. So in this situation, that's definitely achieved. Thanks for watching this one, guys. I hope you've learned a little bit about a Sunsun 304B if you're debating getting one or maybe just about canister filters in general. Appreciate you watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you're not already subbed up, trying to get to 5K before Christmas, if you could help me do that, that would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.